nice fish. Stay on, you little son of a gun. That's a great fish. That's a really great fish. He's pulling the whole boat. Come on, come on, come on, get the buddy. Get him in, get him in, get him in. I'm trying. Come to set him to the boat. Hang on, he's under the boat. Let's just let him, let's let him run for a second. All right, here he comes up, he comes up. Nope, back under the boat. I got him come around this side again. Got him. That's another fish. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my god. There we go. All right. Nice. Let me drop anchor. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're busting up there still too. They're still they're still going. Well, we're gonna take a quick picture. Alright? Yeah. And we're gonna take a get a little video on it. That's great. We're gonna get a tape on this guy. Dude, that is a fantastic specimen. This is what we're here for, boys and girls. This is exactly literally that thing just popped out of its mouth. Look at that. Look at that smallmouth. That is a beast. Oh yeah, that's exactly why we're here. Get up early for them for them big boys. Alright. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna put his head this way. Can you turn it? Can you yeah. flip it over? Cool. Alright. Put his head up there for me. You got him? You got him. Alright. We are at just shy of 19, 18 and three quarters. That's a big fish, guys. This is an old fish. Very old. These smallmouth grow very slowly. So if you're running at a fish this big, he's at least 12 years old. Uh, 10, 12 years old at least. That's a fantastic specimen. Fought hard. Put a great bend in a seven weight. That's what we're here for. That's what in the spread's all about. This is the uh, Olympic medal from Looper Flies. This is a size two partridge hook. Uh, so it's a bit of a smaller version, but they're eating, they're eating small bait. So we're gonna get back on it. They're not very migratory. They kind of stay to their home base. Got him, got him. I'm hooked up, I'm hooked up. Another good one. Another really good one. Ah, uh, that's okay. I got him. Yeah, about 14 inches. Still, still eating them shads. Do you? Can you get that on? Oh, uh, off. Okay. Yeah, they are. They are. They're they're flopping around right there. And the structure of the bottom of this river, uh, primarily kind of freestone, right? A little rocky some vegetation, not too much, uh, but there's still structure for these fish to hide in. So they're all over this middle of just yeah. looking for a shad. Alright, uh, no rhyme or reason, because yeah. I know Somalis just, you know, absolutely love current. Uh, you know, we found a lot yesterday that they were in the current. They weren't in the slack stuff. Uh, and we still have some... Yeah, I did. Way off next to the bank. Can you get me a little closer? Um, they, uh... So this morning they're putting the feed bag on. You know, and probably getting ready for the day. Because when it's real hot, I mean, it's just like you guys getting ready for work. You're going to eat... I say, oh, yeah. You're going to eat some breakfast. You're going to have some coffee. Maybe go... Shoot lost it. All right. Uh, so we are fishing a tailwater, kind of like we fished uh, on the Holston uh, for smallmouth. So we are at a, um, a river system where the, the current is managed. Uh, so if we're not under heavy rain and they're doing standard generation, the TVA will run the dam uh, for an hour pulse to create electricity for the town. And what that's doing for us, since we're well downstream from the dam, um, we're actually ex experiencing the, the tail end of the last pulse. So it's five, six miles above us. Uh, look, I got some bubbles. Let me see what this is. Yeah, they're in the middle too. Um, so I'm going to throw downstream since, since my current 
it's going to go we're, we're drifting with the current here the current is pushing my fly and my line down so rather than throwing at 90 degrees or above the boat i like to throw downstream uh, it creates less of a belly here i'll go ahead and show you if i were to throw next to the boat at like a 90 degree angle and i'll just let that go if you can see my fly line it will start to belly out it will start to push down as i pull in and what ends up happening is the bait is pulled down and swung down um, so the uh, <coughs> instead of seeing the fly first the, the fish will see the fly line first and generally get pushed off so i'm going to throw downstream uh, if you were to think of your boat as a clock man they are blowing up over in the middle let's get over there uh, but if you're thinking of your boat as a clock you want to throw um, where the, the bow is 12 and the, the, uh, the stern is uh, 6, I want to throw somewhere around 7, 8 o'clock uh, if I'm on that side of the boat or the other. But I want I'll, maybe a 60 degree angle would be a better description. Um, if you look at a peace sign where the bow is the top, you want to hit one of those legs. Um, and that way you'll limit the bellying or, or the pull or the drag from your fly line which would affect the way your fly moves uh, it's going to affect the action um, the response will affect your hookup let's say if a fish actually does chase if you have all this slack in your line uh, and you go to set there's not enough tension and not enough um, we want to we want to make sure the distance between us and the fish is as short as possible any sort of slack or extra line is going to mean probably a missed fish or missed opportunity. But they seem to be busting in the middle now, right in front of me even. Alright, so, so they've been generating this schedule here for about a month, uh, Derek tells me, which is, which is very important to know uh, for your consistency. Um, you're going to find fish will get accustomed to a regularly scheduled current flow um, and they will respond to that flow versus the, the uh, lower times or less current. Uh, remember these fish rely on the river to, to as its conveyor belt. You know, this is its cafeteria and it's got to go through the line or the, it's actually having the line go through while it sits still. So, uh, so if it knows uh, between a certain time or if it, it's, it's I mean, Pavlov's dog is an excellent example. Fish aren't smart, but they're conditioned, easily conditioned. Um, and ring the dinner bell and the dog starts to drool, you know? So when the current comes through, that fish is gonna feel that current change. It's gonna feel the, probably the water temperature change. And it's gonna know that dinner's on its way. So if we have a consistent generation schedule that's, that's that's doing the same thing uh, day in day out for a month and the bait fish are becoming accustomed to that then the, the smallies are going to follow suit and that's what we're seeing here today we're going to target these little bank spots um, we actually just missed a visual eat I banged my rod against the motor and missed the set but uh, so we're going to aim at stuff like this. These overhanging branches, we're going to try to throw underneath those. Skip that underneath it without making a big splash like that. Um, because the fish are going to live there. They're going to hide up underneath there. And there's cover. There's, uh, there's less current. It's kind of a back eddy on this, on this, this bank. You know, this grass is, is great for uh, insects and other uh, aquatic um, crustaceans or other bugs that these guys will eat. Oh, there's one right there. There's one right there. I think it's a carp. I can't tell. I think it's a carp. I think that was a carp. Yeah, that must have been a carp. He was right underneath there. He was really shallow. But even this branch right here, we're going to target that. And we're going to let it drift next to it because there might be a smallmouth living in it, around it, under it. Uh, it's again, it's structure, it's cover. Um, this guy's gonna sit there in his lazy boy, waiting on the food to come by. And 
and I'm just this little scared bait fish running away. Please, sir, don't eat me. Please don't eat me. You want to just flip that up there, get as close to the bank as you can. Let it kind of drift and twitch, drift and twitch, and wait for that tug. And right up here, it's a little deeper. You see there's a cut in underneath this log. We're going to get as close to that log as we can. Twitch it a few times and wait for the fish to come out and eat it. One more throw up in there. That close. Just like that. Just like that. Twitch, 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 twitch. Yeah, so these, these fish are going to hang out underneath the trees to get away from birds of prey. Uh, when they're out in the open, they, they could potentially be picked up, you know, could potentially be food for another, another animal. Uh, otters, uh, stuff like that. So these fish are going to try to get into some cover so they're protected. And we're going to throw up in their home and trick them. Let that drift underneath that tree just like that. And that'll be something that pops out. We're getting up to um, some more current, so it'll be less frequent to see something. But they're still here. Up here we've got a section of some, some heavy current moving off. The bank cuts in, and there's a slack section, what we call an eddy. And I'm going to throw in there because that's where the fish is going to hide. It's going to live in there, and it's going to rush out into that current and eat. I'm going to throw up again right behind there, underneath that tree. Just like that. That's fine. That's fine. I won't. I'll do my best not to. Oh! I was looking downstream and I missed one. Try that again. A little fast water. Even over there, there's some, uh, there's some current and there's eddies and that bubble line. We talked about the bubble line. Um, we want to target that bubble line because there'll be fish underneath it. So we're going to let that kind of drift through with that current and twitch, twitch, twitch and wait for something to eat. See all those bubbles on that water? That's a good, a good sign. A good sign for fish. Right underneath that cover. Close to the bank as we can get without getting hung up. Twitch, 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 twitch. Close as I can get to the bank. And we're also throwing downstream so that we're not going to create a belly in the line. We want the first thing that the fish sees is the fly, not the fly line. So as we come down through this current, uh, come down through this section to this shoal, we're going to target things on the bank here, overhanging branches. We're going to target a uh, structure beneath the water that we can see, um, a current break, something that's going to provide some sort of eddy or slower section of water next to um, a seam or a faster section of water. Um, those fish are going to hold up in that slower section and rush out into the fast section to eat as, it com as food comes along. So like right even here, we'll have a current section and it, and it falls out. Oh look, look, there's something eating right there. Did you see it eating? Yeah. Uh, look at him, look at him going, look at him go. It might be a carp. I think that's a carp. Oh yeah, it's a carp. It's a big carp. See him right there? It's a big carp running upstream. Two of them side by side. So this eddy right here, we're going to throw up in here. Because that current and that bubble line, that's what I'm looking for. All that stuff. There should be something in here eating. Should be something in here eating. I see it. Okay. We're gonna throw. See that water will swirl back upstream. Ah, I got him. Got him hooked up. There he is. Just like I said, underneath that bubble line. Just like I said. Not a big one, but he's textbook man. That is textbook right there. Textbook smallie fishing. Not a real big fish, but he's in where he should be, right in that, in that area. You know, again, not real big. Not real big. He's a juvenile, a couple years old. Uh, oh, look, look. Look at the crawdad in his mouth. Oh, you got to see this. He may spit it up. You got to see this. Look right in there. 
See that crawdad? He's eating crawdad. So that's another good food source. He's eating these bugs right off the bottom. I'm gonna see if I can pull this out so you can actually see what he's eating. There's his head. Oh! See, that's just the head of a crawdad. You wanna do it one more time? So that's something else. We could switch up and throw some crawfish because they're eating, clearly they're eating that. Um, we caught him on a bait fish. And the other thing about smallies is they are, they're gonna, they're, um, these guys are predators of opportunity. So you saw he had a mouthful of food. He didn't care that there was another meal coming by because he doesn't know the next time he's going to be able to eat. He can't tell you the future and say, I know for sure there's going to be a sandwich in the next five minutes. So if something comes through, he's going to eat it. Absolutely, he's going to eat it. <clears throat> Voracious feeders. All that's good stuff right in there. Bubble lines. It's a classic, man. Classic textbook location. So I'm going to cast next. You see as this point comes out, again, it's another current break and you have an eddy. You can even see the bubbles moving upstream. They'll be in there for sure. There's another smaller eddy on the back end of this structure. These rocks that come off, you'll see there's that bubbles whirl back upstream. That's telling you exactly what the current is doing. And that current is washing food back into there. So, I mean, I'm, I'd be shocked if there's nothing in there. I'm actually, there he is! <laughs> That's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's a largemouth. No, it's a white bass. It's a white bass. Yeah, I got him. White bass are a lot of fun, man. I love eating these guys. This Olympic medal was developed specifically for white bass. That's a great, great little fish, man. It's a super fun fish to catch. Super, super fun. Uh, they're my favorite fish to eat, hands down. I love eating white bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quick release. But again, you know, these fish are going to hold, smallmouth are going to hang out with other species. They're not going to run off, you know, uh, and they hang next to this structure, man. It's, it's just a good place for them to be. The food comes to them, and then they eat it. That's cool, man. I like white bass. They're a lot of fun. They fight for the size. They fight tremendously. We're going to do a series on those guys in the spring. They come out of the uh, lake system and run up a uh, river to spawn, and man, they're just, the water's slick with them. You know what I mean? Like, just oil sheen on the water from how many is it in there. Another eddy. See that point coming off? We're going to shoot back there in the back. There's a cart back there. See him? See him? I can see him. I'm going to hit him on the head. I bet he'll eat this. I bet he'll eat this. Nope. He don't care. He does not care. I'm going to hit him one more time. See if I can make him eat. You see him? See that shadow? He's right. Oh, I just went over top of him. Oh. He's gone. He's gone. Nope, there he is. He's still there. I can see his lips. I just lined him. I don't know how he hasn't freaked out. And, oh, he's turned. Uh, hang on. No, he's done. I just hit him in the head. We're not here for that anyway. Carp are fun, man. Carp are a whole lot of fun. There, he's still there. He's still there. You see him? See his dark shadow right there? He's moving this way. <clears throat> so this section right here uh, drops right off. So it's pretty deep. Um, certainly deeper than we were fishing. 
So as I come off these little cliffs, I'm going to twitch a little bit, and I'm going to let that bait just fall. Because, again, it's deep, and these fish are holding deeper. So um, count it down a couple seconds, give it a twitch, just wait, twitch. Ah, it's hung up. You got it back. We're good. I'm going to check that hook real quick. That's the downside of letting it fall, <laughs> is you're going to get hung up uh, on the bottom. Okay. All right. So as this uh, as this fly will fall, we're going to try to get to those fish that are that are deeper than where we just came from. And so we're going to count that down. I'm fishing with an intermediate line, so it is sinking. Uh, it is sinking slightly. It's not a full sink line, but there is some sinking. Uh, getting our fly down lower to where the fish are feeding. I see it jump, I see the weight. There's some disturbance right here. There's a carp. That might have went blew up. There's another one. Look at that one. See his bottom? They're quite everywhere, yeah. Um, so right now the sun is cooperating with us, meaning we've got some cloud cover, uh, which is going to give us a little bit more time on the morning bite than if it were a blue sky, uh, very little clouds. Um, if you actually take a, take a peek, it's a beautiful shot, but it's a giant cloud uh, covering the, uh, the sun for us, and it's kind of overcast. Um, which means the, uh, the fish are going to be a little bit more active. Uh, they're going to pay attention when, um, uh, when, when certain UV spectrums are more active than others. Uh, we, seem, we seem to find patterns. Morning, afternoon, evening is better than the middle of the day. Um, you know, it could be shadows. It could be, um, uh, you know, heat. Certainly, heat, radiation from the sun, heating up the water. As long as that cloud cover's there, it's going to maintain and prolong that bite uh, that we were, we're trying to get in this morning. And again, I'm still structuring, uh, targeting structure against the bank. I just threw out behind this rock. I'm hoping there's going to be something hiding behind it or around it and see my fly and come out and take a bite. <laughs> Consistently, these fish, these fish associate with structure, with some sort of cover, whether it's logs, whether it's rocks, whether it's overhanging branches. You know, all up here on the left, there's tons of driftwood, dead trees. All of that is an excellent, excellent hold for uh, a smallmouth, a den. Look at that carp. Look at that carp. These things are huge, dude. That was a big one, like a 20-pounder. All in that structure. There's a sally, yellow sally just coming off. Yep. Or a sulfur. One of the two. Alright, the sun's out. My glasses are fogging up. It's getting hotter. Immediately, there's probably a 10 degree temperature change as soon as the sun comes out. 5 degree, not 10. But it's significant enough that my glasses are now foggy. I'm sweating. Five minutes ago, well, that wasn't the case. Uh, and you will see that affect some fishing. You know, as it gets later in the day, the sun gets higher. Um, it's probably, what, 9.30 in the morning now, 9 o'clock. Uh, we're still going to target the same areas. We're still looking for structure. We're still looking for eddies. Um, with that current break off the side of a large current scene or something like that. But the sun is out. It means we're just going to have to work harder. That's really all it means. Um, don't pack it up and go home just yet, but you just definitely have to keep at it. Keep, keep grinding. They're in here. They will eat. The sun does affect it, though. Definitely affects it. You start hearing more insects active. Like, we can hear the cicadas buzzing in the trees. Didn't hear that before the sun was out. All that stuff warms up. Things start to change around as the day progresses. 
But here we are, got another little eddy. It's not real deep, but we'll see if it, something's in there. Targeting that rock, going for that structure again. Skinnier water generally holds skinnier fish. We're not going to find a whole lot of fat ones in sections like this. You might pick one up, but just like that. <laughs> There's a little one. Oh, he popped off. That was a little bitty guy. Like I say, guys, skinny water, skinny fish. But he was right where he should be in that current scene. Right where he should be. Came out and hammered it. We're going to keep pounding that bank, pounding that structure. Coming up here, you can see the current. There's a cut in on the bank, a little eddy. We're going to hit that. All that's crucial. There's a bigger one below that, in front of the, gla the grass below us. We're going to uh, target that structure. Okay. Yep, yep. We're going to hit this before we do. Again, I'm throwing downstream and letting my fly drift through that current seam. One more time, try to hit that eddy. Don't want to get any belly in our fly line. Let that fly drift a little, twitch, twitch. Wait for something to grab it. Twitch, 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 twitch. We're gonna hit it one more time and we'll sit down. One, two, three, four. Nope, that's it. If you look off to the right, we got bubble lines. We love bubble lines. That generally means there's a slight uh, Elevation change, there's a depth change. Um, we, uh, we're going to target over there where that bubble is. And even in the middle of the river, you're going to find structure. You're going to find current break. You're going to find different seams where these fish are going to hold up. When in doubt, put a fly in the water. Don't drop your fly line when you do a back cast. <laughs> So we're actually going to move over to this other side of the river because the sun is not quite high enough uh, to where the entire river has no shadow. So on this side of the bank, we've got some structure, we've got some logs, we clearly have an eddy with some current break. Just look at the bubbles. There's a seam there, a current seam closer to us, and empty in the middle. It's actually swirling backwards. That's the, that's the eddy we like. So I'm going to throw into there. And see if we can pull something out of this back part of it. We'll see. We'll see. No guarantees. Oh, no, you're good. I'm gonna just drip that through. Hopefully something will ah. hopefully I'll get hung up just like that. Awesome. I'm off. I'm gonna throw again back up into this eddy and pull it back out. Man, my glasses keep fogging up from the sun, the heat. It's a hot summer day. All right, we want to keep structure. Keep, keep targeting this bubble line, man. All of that's key. Absolutely key. Yeah, I like that. It's cooler even over here. It's not. It's certainly not as hot, and that's going to affect the water temp, uh, especially the surface water temp now. How much, I couldn't say, maybe a degree, maybe half a degree, not much, but it is hot and, uh, and all of that will affect the fishing. I was just dead drifting that too, man. He just came up and grabbed it. Absolutely dead drifting it. But again, deeper water, we got a bubble line, all those things that come together to, to produce a, a great smallmouth fishery. Again, you know, this guy's not huge, but he is so pretty. He is just so pretty. I love it. And he's happy. He's a happy fish. So that grass, I'm going to hit that grass before we go, if that's okay. So we got, we got some grass here. We got some aquatic vegetation. It's going to be a great cover for um, bait fish, for smallies alike. Um, so we're going to try to try to get as close as we can into the vegetation without getting hung up and then pull it out and see if we can catch something on the side here that may be cruising, uh, looking for a meal. And 
and I'm going to cast downstream. I'm going to cast away from the boat so that we can uh, don't show the belly of the fly line to the to the fish first. We show it. We show the fish uh, the bait we want it to eat, the fly we want it to eat. Just like that, right next to the grass. And we're going to let it twitch, twitch, twitch. And hopefully something will eat it. And one more. It's awful shallow through there. Yeah. Welcome to In the Spread. I am Sam Looper. Uh, today we did some, uh, talked about a lot of fishing for smallmouth bass, particularly using the fly rod. Um, this is a clutch uh, React 350. Um, this is a one-piece rod, so it's a little unique. Most, uh, most rods that you would see us throwing streamers are four-piece, nine-foot long. This is an eight-foot one, one-piece. Um, but we want to use the larger weight rod because we're fishing primarily streamers. Uh, I know when a lot of people think fly rods and fly fishing, they think trout, mountain streams, you know, old men in tweed jackets and pipes. Uh, we do things a little differently, and uh, I really, really enjoy the streamer fishing game. Um, on my uh, rod is a Rio um, is a Rio nine weight. This is an intermediate uh, line. It's clear, which helps uh, in in tough conditions, um, but it is. It, it doesn't sink completely and it doesn't float completely so so it's that intermediate class uh, where um, it's going to keep our fly at the right depth where these fish are feeding um, attaching our fly line to the fly we've got our tippet and this is 20 pound test uh, about three feet or so uh, is more than enough um, we got fish jumping around us fellas <laughs> but uh, because this is an intermediate line and it's clear, <clears throat> we don't need eight foot a liter. Um, what, uh, what we've got here is, is, like I said, just two to three feet, and that's going to keep our fly in the zone as well as um, if it were longer, if it were a longer liter and we're using an intermediate or a sinking tip line, uh, our fly would be above our fly line, and we want the fly to come down and, and get, have that fly line bring the fly down to the depth where the fish are. Um, this is an Olympic, Olympic medal. It's a, a pattern I, I do. Uh, it's just a small silver bait fish. Uh, today we had a lot of shad busting the top and a lot of fish eating that shad. Uh, it features a partridge hook, a flyman fish skull mask, and a whole lot of crinic flash. Uh, is what we're using but uh, we'll talk a little bit in depth about the fly later uh, right now um, we are just cruising down and doing some last minute uh, last minute fishing today see if we can pick up a last a last minute smallie uh, the conditions today were wonderful we really couldn't ask for better weather uh, had some great cloud cover early in the day uh, prolonged that bite for us we got here 5 30 this morning uh, well before the sun came up. I think sunrise was just after 7 today. So we were here for when the magic started, and that's important. You don't want to get, you don't want to, get to your spot too late. Uh, you want to get there before the fish start act, being active. That way you're ready when they're ready, but you're ready first. Um, we were targeting a lot of structure, uh, a lot of current breaks, and what we call eddies. Uh, we're targeting uh, these, these bubble lines, these bubble trails. Um, we're specifically looking behind structure, overhanging branches on the bank, uh, logs under the water. All of that is going to be crucial for finding our smallmouth. So today we are, um, this is September 1st is today. So uh, we are nearing the end of summer and the beginning of fall. Um, we're going to start seeing uh, a little different transition. A lot of times in the summer, these smallmouth are just destroying top water. We can throw poppers, we can, we can throw uh, anything up top, hoppers, terrestrial patterns, uh, beetles, and they'll come up and sip it. Uh, as it gets later and later in the day, start to get shorter. So after we hit the uh, summer, what is that thing called, the solstice? It's the longest day of the year in the summer. After we hit that, we're going to start seeing the fish Kind of, kind of get it a little deeper, turn it off a little earlier, start putting um, 
putting their attention towards bait fish, uh, streamers, uh, all of those things are gonna, gonna help improve your uh, catch ratio as, as we move into fall. Uh, these fish will put on the feed bag pretty heavy before winter. Uh, they're gonna, just like a bear would, before he goes to hibernate. Now the smallies won't hibernate, but they certainly uh, are not as active as, as they are right now. Uh, that transition period is great. Uh, we, we definitely had a great day today and um, brought many fish to hand. Uh, all of these tactics that we were talking worked. Um, and really, I didn't have to change flies all day today. The same fly worked for me all day long. Um, the key would be matching what these fish are eating. There's a forage that we could see. We could see small shad busting. We could see them stun as they came out of a frenzy. Something would, you know, one, one of the shad would be floating next to it, uh, next to us on the boat, and I immediately knew that's what they were eating. Um, so we were able to match that up and, uh, and bring some fish to hand. Yeah. 